Welcome to the Kids Who Can Digest, episode 4 with Rob and Fiona. A brand new new show where Rob and Fiona and sometimes a surprise guest to bring you all the news you need to know. <laughs> and some news you really don't need to know as well. Plus a good bit of commentary you probably didn't ask for. Alright, let's get started. It's February 6th, the first digest of a new month. And we have some huge stories to cover this week. Starting with everyone's favorite developer, Blizzard. Overwatch is still going strong, but Blizzard's other game, Heroes of the Storm, looks like it could use a little bit of a boost. I got a great fix. Add Overwatch heroes to Heroes of the Storm. They are doing exactly that! You're a smart one, or at least you and Blizzard are on the same thought wavelength. <clears throat> Alright, so, yes. Heroes of the Storm is adding Lucio, the famous Jamaican wall-riding hero, to the Nexus. How the heck are they going to make that work? Riding on walls inside the Nexus? All right, give the guys at Blizzard some credit here. I'm glad you asked. Lucio's wall ride ability gives him a 20% stackable bonus to movement speed, and it will also let him walk through other units while traveling along impassable terrain. All right. His sound wave ability damages and knocks back enemies in, within a cone area. Really standard. And the crossfade gives him the ability to provide a selectable healing boost or a speed boost to allies within a, quote, large radius. So you guys will have to play and figure that out. And Amp It Up increases his crossfade volume, increasing the effect of both boosts for three seconds. Okay, but how's that going to work with his ultimates? Is it going to be a shield like he gives in-game? Don't most Overwatch heroes have two ultimates? Calm down, they figured this out too. Again, give them some credit here. Sound Barrier creates a massive, short-lived shield that will protect Lucio and nearby allies. And Reverse Amp will inflict damage on enemies or slow their movement for four seconds. Okay, sounds like it's going to not be like horrible suck terrible. I really liked playing Heroes of the Storm, and it's nice to see that Blizzard hasn't abandoned it. On to the next big game. Conan Exiles launches too much fanfare. And unfortunately, it's got a lot of people talking about dongs. Dongs? Yeah, dongs. There's realistic dong physics. Everyone's talking about it. I can't get people to shut up about it. Okay, so basically this is a survival game in the same vein as Ark and Rust, right? And it's mostly the same game, but just with a little bit of difference. <clears throat> I mean, you do the same things you do in Ark and Rust. You spend your time crafting and trapping animals. Yes, it's survival crafting with slaves that will help you uh, do stuff and increase your uh, crafting efficiency, essentially. And uh, at, at the moment, again, it's a release, but it's uh, kind of uh, missing some stuff. Uh, there is kind of tough enemies you can go fight. But uh, the devs are already have announced they're planning to add sorcery, uh, fatalities, and uh, that'll really up the brutality of the uh, Con the Conan combat, as I'm going to call it from now on. <clears throat> and the dev has announced there's going to be castration in PvP, so that's awesome, or terrible, depending on how you feel about missing your balls. So hopefully you don't get turned into a eunuch in Conan. <laughs> Next up, this weekend saw the very first closed beta of Ghost Recon Wildlands, a game I have been waiting for for a long time. Where you and a team of three elite spec ops agents infiltrate Bolivia to take down a drug lord. Now we both know this game has nothing to do with stopping drugs and everything to do with trolling your teammates with explosives. Well, yes, mostly it's about blowing you up. But other than driving your friends off cliffs and blowing them up, I'm in love with this game. Everything feels amazing, from the gun handling to the stealth elements. This feels like a true sequel to the last Ghost Recon game. I love how you can do things with stealth or just drop mortars on the enemies and run in guns blazing. Just don't try and drive anywhere efficiently fly. Okay, the cars do feel like they're driving on ice, and they can barrel down mountains like tanks and run over things, but the rest feels really good. Yeah, I enjoyed what I played of it uh, when Fiona wasn't blowing me up. What? I like seeing what happens. Fox. Alright, fine. fine. Let's, what else we have for today? This weekend also saw the open beta of Sniper Ghost Warrior 3. Our own Fiora the Tank Girl got the chance to play it. If you want to see her play the whole demo, take a look at the article she wrote or watch her video on YouTube. We'll link to her channel up above us here in the note. And I watched a bit of it, and I gotta say, this game, not really for me. Way um, too easy to just go in guns blazing. It's supposed to be a sniper game. Why does run and gun work better? I feel the same way about the other big sniper series that's out there. There's just too many options where shooting up the place works better than actually being a quote-unquote ghost warrior. But uh, surprisingly, Fiora loved it. Yeah, let me quote her article really quick. 
The developers have nailed the feel of using a rifle as much as possible with a mouse and keyboard. The wind and weather effects seen in games so far feel like real wind and weather. The game still has two months of development to go and has already put together nearly all of what was promised by the developers and publishers. Sniper Ghost Warrior 3 could very well be a contender for Game of the Year. Strong praise from a streamer who doesn't give that kind of freight easily or often. Agreed. It's a good sign. I guess I really should check this game out and give it more of a chance than I have so far. And finally, we've got some console news. And you thought we only talked about PC? Well, I mean, I'm right nine times out of ten, but, you know. Oh, hush! PlayStation are finally using that PS4 Pro power they so hyped up when they released the system. In the latest firmware, which is version 4.50, PS4 Pros are going to receive a new boost mode. Turbo Boost! <sighs> Boost mode lets PS4 Pro run at a higher GPU and CPU clock speed in order to improve gameplay on some PS4 games that were released prior to the launch of PS4 Pro. So, overclocking on the PS4. Yes, pretty much basically exactly what they're doing. Woohoo! Wonder if that'll fix the legendarily long PS4 load times. Knowing Sony, probably not. Hopefully it doesn't make it worse. Knowing but finally... Sony, probably so. Finally, we're going to leave you guys with a bit of a humorous situation, shall we say. Final Fantasy XV, a game in development for over 10 years and with one of the largest commercial releases in decades, has experienced a somewhat unique delay for its newest DLC. Don't tell me. I bet it got eaten by a chocobo. I hope not. And no. That S makes me raise a lot of odd questions if that happened. Anyway, not this time. It's actually because... The set of Magitech exosuit items look too much like a Power Rangers costume from the new movie. What? 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 Nope. I'm not making this one up. Just for once. GameSpot put up a side-by-side -side of the two sets of armor. You could swear that the suits were from the same set of pictures. Wow. Okay, that's all the time we have for today. <laughs> Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and leave a comment if you want. I read every single one. That's all for this week's Digest, and I hope you guys are having a great week. See you guys next week.